Hello everyone, my name is Quinn, my pronouns are they, them, and welcome to my channel, Lucid Moons. So happy to have you here with me today. I am filming this video on December 30th, and guess what? It's my birthday today. Yay! It's fucking Capricorn season, bitch. That's what's up. <laughs> You can probably hear in my voice that unfortunately I did wake up a little sniffly, a little snuffly today, so please excuse the snottiness. <laughs> I'm going to do my best. Um, but yeah, I'm otherwise feeling great and I'm excited to be sharing my tarot deck collection with you further today. Honestly, y'all, I really thought I was going to get all these videos filmed and uploaded but before the end of 2023. Yeah, about that. Um, <laughs> I feel like October through December is always just so crazy and chaotic. Um, that's definitely the case this year. So yeah, I'm going to be, I think, batch filming my indie tarot deck collection today while I have some alone time and my nails look good. I did them myself, so some of them are a little wonky. Oh, <laughs> But um, yeah, and then we will worry about the Oracle section when I get around to it in the new year. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. So without any further ado, let's start looking at some indie tarot decks. The first deck I'm going to show you is the Zeke's Arcana Tarot. This is such a fun one. Oh my goodness. I am in love with this art style. This is by Zeke's Lunchbox. Um, these are those gorgeous backs. We have some pink gilding, I'm here for it. And this artwork is just so freaking cool. I am such a fan. It's very psychedelic. It's very out of this world. And really, I don't think there's anything else like this deck on the market, to be honest with you. It's just so unique. Um, it's so cool. Uh, my favorite color combination in the world is purple, blue, and pink, and this is just filled with those colors. It's like bubblegum, cosmic alien vibes, which isn't always my vibe, but sometimes it's my vibe, and this is definitely the vibe. <laughs> so I just think it's this is one of the extra cards that it came with. And yeah, I, some of the miners are a little on the pippy side, but you can see they still invoke the RWS imagery and they're still super easy to read. This moon card is so wholesome. I love it so much. <laughs> and yeah, this is just a really, really awesome trippy AF deck that I absolutely adore. That is the Zeke's Arcana. All right, next up, we have the Anima Mundi Tarot by Megan Wire Whedon. I don't know if I'm saying that, so sorry. Um, I got this one pretty recently, and it's one that I'm currently working with in the month of December, so it's been on my desk. Um, these are the gilding. It, it, it was well loved before it came to me, and I'm cool with that. I don't mind. Um, yeah, I like getting decks. Oh, we are definitely dealing with some glare in these streets. Okay, I'm just going to move it down slightly. I was struggling with lighting today. What else is new? Um, but yeah, this is just a really pretty kind of, I don't know if minimal is the right word, but it's, a, it's very, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of understated. It's soft. It's kind of open and spacious in the imagery and I think that the animal choices are excellent in this deck. I'm a huge fan of animal decks um, and I think that the creator did an amazing job. The guidebook just gives you a little bit about each card but it actually tells you what species exactly of animal or plant that you're looking at because there are a few plant cards in here. There are some more pippy pips but like God, look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. And for me, this deck definitely gives off winter vibes, just the color palette. And there are some very like explicitly winter um, cards. So I really enjoy that. I don't have a ton of decks that give off winter vibes to me. So I have been working with this this December. Unfortunately, I've just been so busy. I feel like this always happens in December. 
um, and I just haven't gotten to read tarot as much as I would have liked. I felt like that was true for a lot of the decks I worked with last month in November as well. It's just a crazy time of year, um, but I was really, really enjoying this one. That is the Anima Mundi. Okay, next up, the one, the only, the She-Wolf Tarot by Devony Wolf. This is, I feel like this is a very beloved deck in the community, and it's a deck that I, I like, but I don't, it's not like my favorite ever. It's kind of like a, like a, I don't want to say love hate for this one, but there are a lot of cards that I love, and then there's some cards that are just like, mm, a little, a little meh, if you know what I mean. Okay, we're just going to adjust that very slightly. Um, but yeah, it's like a very beautiful digital collage deck. Um, once again, it has a lovely color palette and it has a lot of open space, which is something that really um, makes it unique from other collage decks that I own in my collection and that it's not overly busy. And I think that's really cool. I absolutely love this Hermit card. It is so gorgeous. And yeah, there's a lot of cards that I think are really, really cool. And then there's some other ones that I just feel a little bit meh about. Um, like this one, I don't know. It's kind of meh for me personally. Um, but like this is really pretty. So I don't know. It's just one of those decks where it's kind of hit or miss for me. And um, but I recently got a really cool Oracle deck that is so dope. And I think it's going to pair really well with this deck and kind of bring it out of its hopefully pairing it will allow me to connect with it. Sometimes that really works for me if I'm struggling a little bit with a deck, if I find a really good pairing for it, then it can start speaking to me more and connecting, um, I can connect with the messages more. So I'm really hopeful that that's going to happen. And you will see, I'm going to save that one as a surprise, but you will see that deck. I'll mention it whenever I get to my Oracle decks. Okay, this is the Tabula Mundi Tarot. <laughs> I always get it confused with the Anima Mundi because I'm pretty sure that one's like a play on this one. Um, I got this second hand at a record store and these are the backs. I love these backs. It came with like one of these and I was like, oh, this was part of like a limited edition. I think this deck, like other editions of this deck are still in print though, but I was just like, you know what? It was a really good price. I'm going to buy it. And I didn't really examine it that carefully. And then I realized the person had actually edged it and like used gold paint. And some of the gold was coming so far onto the fronts of the cards that I ended up trimming it down pretty significantly. And you can see some of the symbols are still mostly visible. Most of them are still visible, but unfortunately I did have to like choppy choppy and I did a really bad job of like trimming it because I don't have like a special little little chopper thing. I literally just use scissors and like eyeball it. <laughs> Yeah, it's not, it's not good. I'm not like crafty, but like on this card, you can see, unfortunately the symbols did get kind of chopped, but you know what? It's okay. I still find this deck usable. I, uh, then went out and I bought like the chunky guidebook that comes with it. And I'm really excited to dig into this next year. It's definitely out of my comfort zone. It's like super deep, super esoteric, all of these different symbols and symbolism in the artwork and yeah i'm a little bit intimidated for sure um but i am excited i i had had the, my eye on this deck for a while and it just worked out perfectly and um i also when i bought this deck it was kind of a nightmare <laughs> it had a really weird smell to it so i don't know it didn't smell like smoke or cigarettes um, but it did smell like someone's house, like food or I don't know. It was just gross. So I ended up scenting this deck with perfume card by card. So it was a process to get this deck in a state that I felt like I could use it. I do still want to, um, edge mine in, I don't know what color. Um, but yeah, that is the Tabula Mundi Tarot, the Coloris 
Arcus edition. Okay, next up, let's look at a cutie pie. This is the Forest NB Tarot by Binks Olsen. This is such a fun little deck. I love the cardstock and the silver gilding on this deck. It's like the soft kind that doesn't hurt at all and it feels good. And it smell this deck smells good to me. Other people might not like that smell, but I like it. Um, these are the backs. I last time I checked, this deck wasn't currently available. I'm not sure if um it is now or if the creator does plan to um make it available in the future but i got it second hand and i don't know i had never heard of it before and i was like forest nb that's me i'm <laughs> just kidding but yeah it's basically uh, an animal deck a cute animal deck very cartoony style as you can see and the idea is that these are sort of gender neutral characters and as we um go through we can uh yeah we can do readings without necessarily prescribing like gender onto the characters in the cards i feel like i explained that so bad oh my god but you know what i mean it's it's supposed to be gender neutral cute little animals and the guidebook uses all they them pronouns it's just like a little tiny a little white book but it's just super cute i really like it um it has different animals for each suit and the majors are just a variety of funny animals i feel like it has a really great sense of humor it's definitely not a deck that takes itself seriously and for me personally i love cutesy adorable decks and i feel like oftentimes really cute decks you think they're gonna be just like a little hug but they'll actually kind of like be really direct um not always but a lot of the time and this one definitely feels like that for me so that is the forest nb tarot okay next up we are going to take a look at the tarot by caitlin madison this is freaking gorgeous this is definitely a splurge purchase for me um, and it really is kind of like a collector's item for me. And it's just one that I just really love and appreciate the artwork. Oh my God, that glare is driving me freaking crazy. I'm so sorry, but it is what it is. Cause when I turn the light off, it's like too shadowy. Ugh. I live in like a little dark hobbit hut. So the struggle is real with this lighting. So bear with me. I'll figure something out eventually. Um, but oh my gosh, just look at this. And I love the size, like a big old card. So you can really see the artwork is, it's everything. Um, so yeah, this is just a really spectacularly done deck. It's absolutely beautiful, trippy, psychedelic, 70s fantasy. It's fashion. It's just, it's so cool. I believe um, the artist is not actually like a tarot reader, but um, she says that, you know, openly, and this is just her interpretation. But basically, I don't give a fuck. This is dope. Like, this art style is so, just so beautiful. It's so detailed. There's so much to discover. If you look at the cards closely and I discover new things every time I use this deck. So this one is a very special one. That is the tarot illustrated by the one and only Caitlin Madison. Absolutely love that art style. Okay, moving along. This is a really, really great deck. This is a favorite for me, the Way Home Tarot. I slept on this deck for a little while because I think when I was a little bit newer a couple years back, I was intimidated that it was a little more pippy, a little more simple, um, but I am sad that I slept on it for so long because as soon as I had this in my hands, I was obsessed and I think it's just so good and I don't know how this team 
created these cards to convey so much while being simple, while being a little bit on the minimal side. Um, it's amazing, and there's so much you can get from some of these cards. I I really, really dive deep when I do these readings. Um, and, yeah, it's just, it reads so fucking good. It's such a good reader for me. And it just, like, oh, these cards just take me to so many different places. So, can't really recommend this one enough if you're into it. I love it. It does have some very confronting imagery of things related to climate change, pollution, um, human impact on the environment, and some that, that's hard to look at for me. Um, and I understand why some people might, like, that might be a deal breaker. Um, but I like it. I want it to, I want my decks to have that balance and to show me to show me difficult things that I might not want to look at, you know, and I think that's important for us as human beings to, to look, look at the difficult things, look at the impact that we do have on the world around us. Um, love the court cards so much in these deck, in this deck. It's just so perfect. Like these are so perfect for each of the courts. I wanted to see if we can find another love this seven of swords oh my gosh like for example this one's not about climate change or anything but like seven of swords what i'm getting from this card is like we see the white picket fence right that sort of is representative of the american dream or the perfect life the perfect family success etc but we don't know what's really going on under the surface someone may have um, on the outside, what looks like this perfect dream life. We don't know the struggles that they might actually be going through underneath it all. So I love that. This is such a pretty Ten of Pentacles too. Love this Daughter of Wands. It's the firework that is so gorgeous. Yeah, I'm not going to find one of the like scary confronting cards. That's okay. I've been thinking about eventually doing like a deep dive of this deck because I do have a lot to say about certain cards. So we'll see. Maybe that will happen in the future. Maybe not. <laughs> That's the Way Home Tarot. Um, next up, this is the Afro Avatar Tarot by Colored Afro's Art. This is new to me. Unfortunately, it is out of print. I am a huge fan of... Avatar The Last Airbender. These are the gorgeous backs. I love that. Um, it has that same really nice soft silver gilding. And yeah, the cards are, cards are super glossy. We're going to struggle. Um, I just was like so excited when I found this deck on, on a Facebook group um, for a really reasonable price because I'm really picky. I know there's a few Avatar Taros on the market, but like a lot of them I just don't vibe with like I they made some weird choices in there no offense but this one is perfect in the way that the suits align perfectly with the elements the characters and the scenes that they chose to represent each card are like freaking amazing and I think it's really cool that this artist reimagined the avatar universe to center around and include um black folks I think that's so cool, so awesome, and yeah, I've had this one out to work with in the month of December as well. Um, once again, it didn't get as much love as I would have liked to give it, so I'm probably going to bring it out earlier next year, and I also kind of want to rewatch Avatar again because um, it's been a few years, and maybe like keep this by my side and just do some readings or flip through it, you know, just have like a little wholesome little wholesome practice like that I think would be super cute and fun okay this is the stunning tarot third edition by Honasa House um I my favorite thing about this deck I mean I do love the artwork but it's the cardstock for me it's just I don't know what it is about it it's like slappy it's slippy and slappy it's like a comfort shuffle deck for me so you will see the edges are very like it actually, I edged it in black, but it's actually pretty worn down. Um, I struggled at first to 
connect with this deck. I love the suit of wands. Like, that is a yes. But some of the other suits were just like, I don't know, I was having a hard time with it. I wasn't sure if this deck was for me. Um, but I actually paired it, weirdly enough, uh, with the Reclaim Oracle. And I know the art styles are really different, but the minimal color palette just worked together. And when I paired it, like I was saying, the voice of this deck just came out and I was able to really connect with it more. Now, I still kind of don't really love the Pentacles suit in this deck. Um, I know the newer edition uh, or editions, I'm not sure which one we're on at this point. Um, the artist did update some of the Pentacles cards to change them. Um, I don't know. I still didn't really <laughs> jive with what I've seen so far. Um, but you know what? I've just accepted it and I don't care. I really just love the colors in this deck. The art is gorgeous and beautiful. And of course, it is a comfort shuffle deck for me. So she's staying. This is the Stunning Tarot, third edition by Honasa House. Okay, we're only going to do a few more for this video. I like to keep it on the shorter side, and I do have quite a lot of indie tarot decks. So next up, we have the beautiful Rainbow Tarot by Sonia Lasso. Such a fun deck. Look at the sides. Ah, it's so cute. It's such a cute deck. I'm not sure if this is still available indie. I, I, it is, oops, sorry, I hit the, the arm. <laughs> um, it is going mass market from what I've heard. Uh-oh. I know there's like a title card mixed in this deck somewhere. I don't know where it is. Oh, well. These are the backs. Love. These are the um, gilded edges. Love so much. This is just... Such a fun one. Sonia Lasso, I believe, is from... Oh, I could be wrong about the country. I believe they are from Venezuela, and they are currently based out of Germany. Um, but I could be getting my... I could be getting it wrong. Um, but they are a really cool non-binary artist. So I just really love... I follow them. I love their art. I love their style. I love their fashion. They just, they got it going on. So if you haven't checked them out, go check out, look them up on Instagram, look them up on Etsy. They are a really dope, just a dope creator in general. And I love the aesthetic of this deck. As you can see, um, it's very straightforward. It's pretty much an RWS clone. Actually, the majors are a little bit more Marseille inspired and the minors are like more RWS inspired, but I just love how sassy and grumpy all these characters are. Like, look at them. They're just so like judging you in the best way possible. <laughs> the colors are so fun. There's cute little animals. It's vibrant, it's queer, and it's just everything I love in a deck. So that is the Rainbow Tarot by Sonia Lasso. And definitely, I'm really happy um, if and when this deck uh, goes to the mass market because I think it's great that it's going to be shared and ac accessed um, by more people. I think that's amazing. So I'm struggling to get her in the box. She's not cooperating today. Okay. Um, next up... I'll show you the, it's actually the only, I keep it in a pouch. It's the only traditional art of the RWS that I keep in my collection. These are the backs. This is the pastel RWS. And I'll show you. I've been um, gilding mine in this like shiny pink. And you can see there's a little section that has a second layer. And the rest doesn't have the second layer yet because I got lazy. Oh, deck modding. I'm kind of over it. <laughs> it just takes so much work. I have so much for respect for all of y'all who are amazing at deck mods and do it so flawlessly. Mine always turn out a little botched, but that's okay. Um, 
they're mine. <laughs> but yeah, this is just a really nice RWS clone, uh, or and it's actually an RWS. It actually is the original artwork, um, but it has made all the colors pretty in pastel, and it has updated uh, to include people of different skin tones. And yeah, I just think it's really cute. You can get it on make playing cards. I don't use it a ton, to be honest. I just, I want to have an RWS deck on hand, you know? You never know when you're going to need to pull it out. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that's my pastel RWS. All right, moving right along. We've got... The Elf of Heaven Tarot. This is another very special one. This is not an original copy. The original copy was um, produced by a Taiwanese artist in 2003, I want to say, and it's very, very out of print. It's really hard to find. Um, I did find someone who, for a limited time, was selling these high-quality reproductions on Etsy, and I'm so glad I snagged one because they're gone, um, as far as I know, um, and... Yeah, so I'm really happy that I was able to get um, this copy because otherwise I think uh, I might have been out of luck for life <laughs> with this one. And I'm just such a huge fan of this artwork. It is, it gives me all of the 90s uh, anime vibes, like 90s slash early 2000s, very, very early 2000s anime style. It is just so fun. I love the characters. It makes me giggle. It makes me happy. It's just so cute. And it's really cool. It's a very unique take on the tarot. It's just, it's, so, it's everything to me. So yeah, that is the Elf of Heaven Tarot. I have a Simulike reproduction version of that deck. Okay. Next, we have the Wooden Tarot by, is it Al, Andrew Schwartz. I almost said Al Schwartz. I was close. Um... This is a really cool deck. I really enjoy these images. I think that they're beautiful and very interesting. It has a lot of really creepy eyeballs staring at you. A lot of the animals have extra eyeballs staring at you. Um, yeah, I think it's really interesting. I don't think I've fully connected with this one yet, but I'm I'm gonna keep trying because I really I just like the vibe that this gives off. It's kind of like weirdly calming in a way with the color palette, but at the same time it's unsettling because of the artwork. <laughs> And a lot of people, when that tag, like your curiosity cabinet decks, when that tag was going around, a lot of people included this and that. And like, yes, this is absolutely a curiosity cabinet deck. Me and my partner actually have a curiosity cabinet or sh it's not a cabinet, it's a shelf um, where we have like animal bones and taxidermy animals and just like weird little boxes and figurines and just just weird shit. Um, so yeah, this, this deck definitely feels like it belongs right on <laughs> that shelf. Um, but it actually lives right next to it with my tarot decks. So that is the Wooden Tarot by Andrew Schwartz. All right, I have one more deck for this video and then you'll have to wait for the next one. Um, I mean, like I said, I, I don't know if I said this actually, but I'm going to batch film um, my indie tarot decks today and then I'll try to get them uploaded over the next week or so. Um, yeah, but 
This is the Playful Heart Tarot by Kit and Chops. Oh my god. This just came in um, maybe like a month or two ago. Oh god. Try not to break the seal. Okay, I got it. Yay! I'm so excited. This deck was unavailable for a while and I was pissed because I wanted it. <laughs> and so as soon as I saw it was coming back, I immediately jumped on it. It's so nice. I love this. I love the quality. I love the artwork. I've played with it a little bit. Haven't done any like super serious readings with it yet. Definitely going to be pulling it out in the spring or summer this upcoming year. Um, but I only have the, the tarot section. It does come with a decent amount of Oracle cards that I have separated. Um, and I think the Oracle cards were making me freaking cry when I was looking at them. So I know this deck is like, it's going to be a hard hitter for me. Um, definitely going to be for some inner, inner child healing work for me. Um, it definitely... When you really get into these images, some of them invoke, um, I don't know, I just feel like they invoke the feeling of being a child for me. The joyfulness, the excitement, the curiosity, the imagination, and also some of the more scary, confusing, uncomfortable um, aspects of childhood. And so I'm, I'm really excited to dive into this one this upcoming year um and with that we are done thank you so much for taking the time to check out some of my decks with me today um i really appreciate it i'm brand new so it would be a huge help if you could hit the like bu button subscribe if you haven't already and yeah that's pretty much it um wherever you are whoever you are i hope the rest of your day is filled with so much magic and so much joy bye